Hi, and welcome to AFI Fest presented by Audi. My name is Sarah Harris. I am the Director of Programming for AFI Festivals, and I'm so glad that you're here joining us for this amazing Q&A. First, I want to thank all of our supporters of the festival, including our presenting sponsor, Audi, and all of our AFI members and you, our audience. Thanks for watching. So today I am here with the uh, special folks from Shadow in the Cloud, the director, Roseanne Lang, and our lead actor, Chloe Grace Moretz. Welcome, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Glad to be here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right to it, but I, uh, this is such a, a fun film, um, something that I, when I was watching, I, you know, was clinging to my seat and also uh, laughing out loud <laughs> by myself because we're at home. Um, but I just, it's such a thrill and really, really exciting. I kind of, you know, the, the easy question is how did you get involved in the, this particular project? And uh, Roseanne, maybe tell us a little bit about developing uh, the script. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I, um, I'm a Kiwi Chinese uh, director who aspires to be making Hollywood action films. And I recently got representation maybe three years ago. Uh, the script came across my desk in 2018 and, um, and I responded to it straight away. Um, a person like me doesn't get that many opportunities. So of course this having connecting to a script and being able to make the kind of films that I, you know, that I, that I thought I could turn into something that I could be really proud of. that was really different. That was unpredictable. That was unlike any other film I've, I'd, I'd found like it before. Before, um, I, I, I jumped on this opportunity um, and then I was lucky enough to to have Chloe um, meet with me and um, and connect with us and then and then we we started going down that road together on the kind of film we wanted to make yeah Chloe what interested you in it when you first heard about it um, the first thing off the bat was of course Roseanne um, I was a fan and I was excited to see what she was doing and kind of what she was taking on um, I also, you know, from the jump, knowing that it was a World War II movie set the lens of a woman, I thought was interesting. Um, and it, it had sci-fi elements was another interesting moment. So I was like, okay, what is this piece? Um, and immediately when I sat down and read it, I was incredibly excited. Um, but it wasn't until really sitting down and talking to Roseanne that I was like, yeah, for sure. There's, there's no question whether or not I want to do this film. Um, she really checked so many boxes on where my head was at with going into my next female, you know, role of where I wanted to be in my positioning of my emotions and how to get that across, you know, on film. And the first thing that, you know, she really said that I was like, oh yeah, we're on the same page was, you know, she said she wanted a, a complicated heroine who wasn't always making the right decisions. That isn't the best person in the room. That isn't doing this you know, for the most selfless reason of the greater good of all. You know, she, at the end of the day, makes some decisions in this movie that aren't awesome. You know what I mean? They're, they're not always right. And uh, I really enjoyed that because uh, us women, we don't get the chance to be able to show that, you know, we're not, you know, we're not always the perfect, you know, citizen. And I think that's a great thing to be able to show. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask kind of a little bit more about this character because um, there is a lot of complexity to it. And I think uh, it's it's really, it's it's quite beautiful. It's um, I'm curious what, if there were any particular inspirations um, for either of you, for, for Roseanne as, as writing that character and then Chloe Grace for, you know, when you're, when you're in the moment and uh, finding inspiration for a certain scene. I mean, there there are these the, the, this canon of, and, and there's not many of them. You know, there's there's these female heroines in action movies that we hold up, and we obsess about and have and grown up with. And those those women are Ellen Ripley from from Alien, from the Alien franchise, Sarah Connor. Um, you know, we 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 look up to these women, and, and there's not many of them, and we kind of hold them dear because um, there are so few. And I, I guess I wanted the chance to make a new one. Um, who could join that canon and um, and Maud Garrett is her own kind is her own person like she there's I don't think there is a, a heroine quite like her because because she is so imperfect because she is so scrappy um, 
because she has a certain set of skills, but also a certain um, <laughs> selfishness. Um, <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, but but who, who amongst us isn't selfish, right? You know, that's just human. Um, so we certainly, you know, uh, the, these women, the, the women, the, the heroes that we sort of grew up with became the foundation on which we hope to build, um, build a new one. Yeah. yeah. So do you have anything to any yeah. Particular? <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, a big one, a big one, you know, for us in terms of look was, you know, as she said, alien, you know, um, Sigourney Weaver and being able to kind of uh, get across that badassery, of course, was something that we, we yeah. immediately, you know, just, just like the, the iconic shape and, the look was a big one as well within that, that we were like, okay, cool. A big one we also mentioned was, you know, not a woman, but Indiana Jones was something that we kind of wanted to pull in pieces of that. Um, you know, the unlikely humor and also the winging it sensibility, um, <laughs> which we don't, you know, we don't usually see, you know, it's not this person that's this trained, you know, spy. She's just figuring it out as she goes. Um, and I think we enjoyed that. But then on top of that, I think for me, something I really wanted to not exactly study, but definitely I watched and, and kind of perceived and took in um, was Sandra Bullock in Gravity. Uh, that was one for how she carried the movie on her shoulders and did it in a way that also didn't feel... Um, like she was aware of it. You know what I mean? They, they, there's, there's sometimes you see movies with actors and they're like, oh, they're aware, like they're the lead in this and you're the majority of the film. And I think she went about it in a way that it told the story and you actually forgot about her being Sandra Bullock. And I thought that was really interesting. And I think one thing I've had to work opposite in my career, because I've worked for this long since I was five, is a lot of people kind of expect me to do a certain type of thing sometimes. And I really wanted to kind of flip it and turn into Maude and have it not be Chloe Grace Moretz, you know what I mean? Having a set in her hair in a World War II flick. I wanted you to kind of really uh, watch this character and follow along with her tale and question her and not trust her and know inherently that something wasn't right and to follow that story and not follow just me. You know what I mean by that? Like falling totally. into the background while also being the only face in the beginning. <laughs> like, yeah, know. no, you transform into like, yes, you're that you have to, you have to be with her for the entire thing. It's, 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 um, it's great. I, I think the other, like it kind of, it segues into this thing that I was, when I was reading some of um, Roseanne's comments on previous work that I think was, is beautifully phrased in, in this in this film as well is the stylistic feminine savagery yeah, <laughs> and 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 it is kind of like taking this idea of a female action hero and but this is also the story is so um so strong in its female point of view and and the connection of motherhood and like that emotional i'm gonna do whatever it takes <laughs> for myself and my child that I think um, it's, it's not usually explored this way. And I really, I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Me too. So, um, I just, if you talk a little bit more about that and, um, and that kind of direction that you, you wanted. Um, well, I mean, I, when I became a mother, I, you know, I, I became aware of, you know, you, you discover things about yourself that you didn't know before, you know, great wells of strength, great wells of patience. These are all well and good, but there is also a great well of potential violence there. It's like when I first held my baby, I was, I knew that I would give my life for this child. And it wasn't just that I would take a bullet for the child it's, it, or go through torture or whatever. It's that I did anyone to come and try and harm this child because then you'll sh you'll see what I'm worth you know you'll see what I'm capable of um and and it's like the hunter in the woods isn't you know isn't shouldn't be afraid of the big alpha male bear they should be afraid of the mama bear protecting its babies and that's what I love about this you know it's we see so many men who are capable of violence and because out of I don't know camaraderie or nationhood or, or you know protecting their family but we don't often I mean there's less movies about that potential for feminine savagery and 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 strength and violence when 
yeah. you're protecting your child or something you care so deeply about. And, um, and it's certainly, you know, it's, uh, it's something that, that, that is connects with me on a personal level. Um, not that I, not that I want anyone to try and hurt my children, but if you try, <laughs> you'll see. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'll be there, you know, so, um, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But I think it is like a, it is a layer to, uh, to those who identify as, as women or as mothers or any part of that, that really, I think is, is something that is an experience and yet doesn't, this is the first that I've really seen it kind of used in a way that, um, as a layer of a story, tell, a story that's telling, you know, something more. And I think it's, I think it's brilliant. Um, I, uh, I also wanted to kind of ask about the creature <laughs> and if the creature was always uh, in the idea of, you know, in the process of, of writing the story, if it was always kind of that like goblin idea or were there other, um, other ideas for what would be haunting this ride, for lack of a better <laughs> No, it is a ride. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, the first, the first thought of this, of this gremlin came, comes from history, is that there, this, is, this is a historical thing, like aliens are to Roswell, gremlins are to World War II pilots. Um, this, is, this was a known phenomenon. When anything went wrong in a plane, they'd blame the gremlins. And uh, you have a history that is sort of untold about that. Roald Dahl wrote stories about gremlins, because he was an Air Force pilot in World War II. And, um, and, and Disney was going to make a movie about gremlins. You can read about the history of this. Uh, but from, you know, from, from where we're sitting now, we forgot about that because of the 1980s gremlin movie. And we think, you know, madcap, silly, you know, reptile creatures. Um, so I, I really relished the possibility of creating again a new monster to add into the classic monster canon. You have again the alien, um, which on its on the face of it is just a nightmarish monster, but it also gets under your skin. There's a there's a abject, some would say sexual element to Alien that was very clearly, that was a Ridley Scott choice. And so, you know, when we were designing the Gremlin, we were thinking about where it came from, it could possibly be in terms of a, you know, animal from the animal kingdom. Um, we were also thinking about its psychological feeling, what it, what it mean, what would, what it would mean for a woman who is sitting in a tiny ball with her legs apart and up by her ears and for there to be a monster there just up at her window. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, Chloe, what, what, I just can't imagine what it was like <laughs> having to act this. Yeah. Uh, crazy. I mean, uh, for lack of a better term, wild. <laughs> you know, it was, it was definitely something that I was excited to jump into. Um, it was like one of the, one of the other first questions I had for you outside of like how technically we were going to get the boys to be able to talk to me in the movie my other question was like and what is the gremlin in terms of who am i working with how am i doing it um and all these things kind of took shape uh, as we kind of went it went through the course of the film and i think the gremlin himself um changed uh metaphorically the more we filmed we found more ways within him and you know did she call on him or did he just arrive is she a part of this? Is it like an incantation? Like there's a lot of like witchery stuff that we wanted to play with too and kind of play with the audience with that. And also the fact that like, this is a girl who is pretty much in stirrups uh, in a position where your legs are completely spread open and I'm on my butt and you're just completely vulnerable. So, you know, it's not a world in which you can close your legs because you can put your foot through the glass. So, you literally can't get out of this position and you have this terrifying animal who is, you know, incredibly domineering between your legs, staring at your face and telling you, I'm going to kill you, everyone on board and your child. You know what I mean? So there were a lot of different ideals we were able to play with within it. Um, and it was a doozy. I mean, our incredible stunt coordinator was dressed in a gray, uh, a gray suit and uh, licking his chops and, uh, you know, doing crazy stuff. So the outtakes are amazing. <laughs> so I think there's a comedy within this movie of the outtakes of, of Tim. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. I was going to ask, I mean, it looks 
like the film itself is uh, like such a ride. Uh, it looks like it would have been incredibly fun to shoot and to create. Um, and especially, and I think too, with the, when you have action and horror, it's it's a, such an intense emotional experience. But then the the process is also can be like a lot of fun. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I just I'm curious if there's any like particular scenes for either of you that were really like your favorite that were the most fun to shoot or perhaps more challenging um, just because it seems I mean, like such a crazy thing to <laughs> I, mean, I mean fun is an interesting way to describe the shoot I mean I, I, it, I don't know I actually think it was an ordeal uh, <laughs> and, and sadistic it was fun at times <laughs> At times. At times. Very I mean, slight times. We made our fun, but most of the time it was just Chloe undergoing this physical ordeal. You know, if she's not cramped up in a tiny claustrophobic space, she's hanging upside down on her own weight. Like, of course, we had, you know, we had stunt. We had, that's all her, by the way. That's her. Like, Chloe can pull up, like... Chloe can put, do more pull-ups than our stunt coordinator at that point. And that was her, actually her hanging upside down. And, and uh, uh, yeah, and, and then, and then it's Chloe in the freezing cold winter water at, on the, in, on the beach, throwing those punches to the air um, or, or to our stunt coordinator in a, in a gray gimp suit um, with like foam, foam claws. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ah, you know, and, and just, yeah, it's, uh, it, I mean, f fun, but freak, freaking intense as well. Like, Chloe, you, you went through physical. a lot. Incredibly physical. In incredibly physical. It definitely was uh, a, a task in of itself to get through this uh, movie in terms of just keeping myself healthy and keeping myself on my feet. Um, and, and honestly, everyone was super supportive and super understanding, and I couldn't have had you know, a better, a, a better group around me who, you know, if I said, Hey guys, you know, I, and I, and I'm, and I'm, you know, I think from working for, for so many years, I am, I know how to get through things. You know what I mean? Even if it's pretty rough, I know that like, I want to get through it. And the more time I can spend in front of the camera, the more time we all get to go home and sleep more at night and then wake up and do it again. You know what I mean? And, and kind of finding that pace within there. And so, you know, but they were great. You know, if I said, Hey, I need just a second to like walk off and like get my legs and also like rinse my emotions a little bit, you know, it's a lot to kind of be expounding so much in such a small confined area and I'm already claustrophobic. So there was just like a lot of things happening inside the film. Um, and then you put me upside down, you know, uh, on the bottom of the belly of a plane and you tell me to climb horizontally you know horizontally that way I mean that's it was the craziest thing I've ever done and yes we had a wire but the wire couldn't take my weight because then it wouldn't look real so the wire was there to catch me basically but I was having to pull and physically hold myself and my chest up against the wall of the bottom of the plane it was it's, it's crazy yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't like I literally couldn't like close my hands after doing it for that like three or four days we shot it yeah that's incredible i i mean well kudos it's uh that's this it's what i was thinking about earlier and i, I don't really know if it's the right word but i think badassery you said it already clear guys it's this is it's a, a really powerful piece of female badassery and i think uh you should be both very proud of your work here i I love it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm never going to forget this movie. And, uh, and I think, you know, it's, it, for me personally, it just, it meant a lot to see um, such a strong woman on screen and also behind the camera, behind the pin, behind the, you know, all of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations on it. Um, so we're going to have to wrap it up, but I just, I want to thank you again for being here and joining us. Thank you all at home for watching. Um, I hope to hear from you on our social media channels, hashtag AFI Fest. Uh, let us know what you like about the film. And uh, congrats again, ladies. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, guys.